in the past four years here on the channel since the summer of 2021 i've tested almost 200 different electric cars and i've driven those electric cars almost 300,000 kilometers that's 200 thousand miles which is insane and in those years i've collected very interesting data in all of my testing and in this video i want to go through some of that data because some of that data is very very interesting and i want to see how electric cars have changed and improved since the summer of 2021 until now the summer of 2025 and i think a lot of my findings in today's video are going to surprise a lot of you so stay tuned for maybe one of the most interesting videos i made on this channel in a long time Kempower offers some of the best DC fast chargers in the world with their unique, sleek and modern load balancing charging satellites. The small satellites translates to elegant and streamlined charging locations. When you pull up to a Kempower charging station, you don't have to think about connecting to a charger that delivers the correct speed for your car. The Kempower load balancing chargers automatically will allocate the correct power to your car, maximizing the efficiency of the charging site. When connected, Kempower chargers have a QR code you can scan, so this way you can easily monitor the charging session remotely regardless of payment method. That is just super cool. A huge thanks to my friends at Kempower in Finland for sponsoring this video. And if you are new here, my name is Chris and I've been basically testing electric cars here through standardized tests since 2021. I do range tests, long trip tests, charting tests, I do road trips, reviews and a lot of fun videos. So if you want to support the channel, it is completely free to hit that subscribe button down below. It takes you about a second, but it does help me and my channel to get pushed out to more people out there here on YouTube. And also it makes my content and me as a creator more interesting and more relevant for the brands, meaning I'm getting invited to more events, more early access. And yeah, I get to test these cars for you. So again, hit that subscribe button down below. It is completely free, but it does help me out a lot. Thank you very much. So as I said, I've been collecting a lot of interesting data throughout the years in my testing here on the, the channel. And I'm not going to go through all of the data here. If you guys want a follow up video to this, I'm going to make another one. So, you know, hit that thumbs up button down below and also comment down below if you want to see more of these videos. But I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. So mainly we're going to go through my range test. So if you're, if you're new here, I do range test over a route that is 200 kilometers, about 120 miles, which I do with every electric car I test here. And all of these tests are available here on the channel. So since 2021, I've tested 183 different electric cars in my range test, which is insane. That is a lot of cars. So just on that test route, that is 60,167 kilometers. That is insane. Um, I've also driven the cars to and from, and also I've done a lot of major road trips throughout Europe. I, you know, I went to um, Genoa in Italy a few years ago with a Polestar 2. I went to Munich with my e-tron GT a few years ago. Also a few years ago, I went to uh, Munich again with a Mercedes E43 uh, AMG SUV. I've gone to Finland, to Helsinki with a Volvo XC40. I've driven a Tesla Model Y to Hamburg. And also I've done a whole bunch of road trips from Oslo to Gothenburg and back. I've been to Copenhagen a few times. I've been to, to Trondheim, I've been to Bergen. And I've also owned three electric cars here on the channel. I owned an e-tron 55 back in 2020. I also owned an e-tron GT back in 2021. And since 2022, I've had a Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. So all of this testing, all of the road trips I've been on and all of my long trip tests and range tests and my private vehicles combined and all the trips I've done accumulates to somewhere between 275,000 kilometers and 300,000 kilometers, which is insane. So I'd say I'm probably more experienced driving and testing electric cars than most people on the planet. Of course, there are people, you know, who do the same thing as me, like Tesla Burn. You have Kyle from Auto Spec. Uh, you have, you know, uh, Chris from Battery Life, uh, my friend in Germany, and a few other people. But we're basically like somewhere between five and ten people who have this experience, I would say. 
uh, testing and driving electric cars, which I think is kind of insane. So that shows my dedication uh, to to my mission here. And you know, if you want to subscribe, you guys know what you're going to get. You're going to get tests of electric cars moving into the future. So in my 183 range test, as I said, I've covered 60,000 kilometers and we have very interesting data. So the average WLTP rated range of those 183 different electric cars tested here on the channel averages out to 515 kilometers. But the actual range we've gotten, and remember my range tests are done at 120 kilometers an hour, that's 75 miles an hour, which is a lot higher than the WLTP rated testing, that's pure motorway testing with a very high average speed, one of the highest average speeds, if not the highest average speed of you know uh, standardized test anywhere on YouTube. There may be a few other channels here and there who do testing maybe in Germany, maybe Chris again does it at a higher average speed, but he doesn't have my data set, right? This is, I have so many cars tested. So the average range is 329 kilometers or 205 miles. And that works out to about 63.8% of the WLTP rating. So the average of 183 cars is 63.8% of the WLTP rating at 120 kilometers an hour or 75 miles an hour, which is very, very interesting. The net battery capacity is 82.8 kilowatt hours. And that is also very interesting. The average consumption, 24.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And the average temperature is 7.8 degrees Celsius. Of course, I live in Norway. I live in Eastern Norway where we have very warm and nice summers. Like the past few weeks now, the past two, three weeks, we have temperatures between 27 and 30 degrees Celsius. Now that heat wave is gone and now it's about 21, 22 degrees Celsius. So, you know, in summer here, it is very mild, it is very warm, but the winters are very harsh. We've done testing down towards like minus 15, minus 20, minus 25 degrees Celsius in winter. So the average temperature works out to 7.8 degrees Celsius because we do testing throughout the winter. And it's also skewed more towards winter because in summer I usually do less testing because that's the holiday season. Also there are less new, new cars and stuff like that. And it's a more leisure time of year for me. I do more intensive testing, you know, in the spring and in the fall. Uh, so, you know, that temperature difference may be skewed towards colder temperatures, just so you know. But because most of my viewers are actually from the UK, the US and Canada and down south on the continent, I do have a lot of viewers from Norway, Sweden and Denmark. And guys, if you are from Norway, Sweden and Denmark, I have a new electric car channel called El Bilkris, which is all in Norwegian. I do the same testing, but I do range testing, not only at 120 kilometers an hour, but also 80 and 100 kilometers an hour. So if you're interested to see how these car performs, at lower speeds, maybe more relevant speeds here in Scandinavia, go check out that channel and subscribe to that channel. We're really trying to get that to 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year, because the more subscribers I have there, the more relevant I am for the Norwegian brands. And again, I'll get invited to more uh, events. So it is a win-win for everybody. And also I try to upload my reviews and the videos there a day or two before the English channel. So it's free early access if you understand Norwegian or Swedish or, or Danish, which most of Scandinavians do. But okay, so for everybody else, I wanted to you know divide the data into what about temperatures above that average of 7.8 degrees. So I took all of my tests um, with temperatures above 7.8 degrees Celsius uh, on average, and then we have 72 tests done with an average temperature of eight and a half degrees or warmer. And that gives us very interesting uh, interesting data. And remember, we're doing this from the summer 21 to the summer of 25. So we do have, you know, uh, complete years here. We're not, you know, doing half a year. So either way, when we do split the data, it should be fair, depending on if they're new or older electric cars, it should be completely randomized. So if we look at the temperatures um, above, um, you know, 7.8 degrees Celsius, we have an average temperature of 16.4, which I think is more befitting to the continent and also North America and Canada. Then we have an average WLTP rating of 529 kilometers, which is about 14 kilometers higher, but our average range jumps up to 358 kilometers or 224 miles, which is quite substantial. And our percentage of WLTP on average jumps up to 67.6%. 
Also, our average battery pack size does actually become a little bit bigger at 84.5 and also our average consumption drops down to 23.1. And you know, this is just, you know, testament to show that electric cars do indeed have higher range and lower consumption in summer than in winter. So I want to look at the full year of the summer 21 to the summer of 22 because I want to compare that to the summer of 24 to the summer of 25. So the oldest year and the most recent year. And the first year we tested 47 electric cars and those cars had an average WLTP rating of 450 kilometers. And the average range we got out of those cars where it was 286 kilometers. So 63.5% of their WLTP rating, which is a little bit higher than we had throughout the, you know, the, the, all the data sets, uh, which is very, very interesting, uh, the first year. And we had an average battery pack size of 73.8 kilowatt hours with an average consumption of 25.1. So let's jump to 24 to 25 because this is very, very interesting. Let's see if we can have both inside here. So the average WLTP rated range of the past year was 563 kilometers. So that's what 113 kilometers more. But our average range jumped from 286 to 361. And that is a substantial jump and remember guys this is real world range at 120 kilometers an hour if you're going 100 it's going to be much higher if you're going 80 it's going to be a lot higher so this is real world range going motorway speeds 361 kilometers which is like 80 kilometers more in just a few years i think that is very very substantial but what is important to see here is that the actual percentage of wltp rating goes up from 63.5 to 64.1. It's not a lot, but actually goes up, which is very, very interesting. And also the average consumption drops from 25.1 to 24.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So I think it is very interesting looking at all of this data because obviously real world range has gone up substantially, right? And the cars are actually a little bit better at achieving their WLTP rated range, not by much, but by a little. And also the average consumption has dropped. And that is also interesting because a lot of cars I've tested, you know, the past uh, year are bigger vehicles, you know, Volvo EX90, Polestar 3, Audi Q6 e-tron, Audi A6 e-tron, Porsche Macan. So we have a lot bigger cars and, you know, it would be interesting testing the same vehicles. Maybe I can go through the data to see, you know, for example, MEB platform cars like the first uh, ID force that tested back in 2021 and looking at the latest, you know, uh, let's go to ENIACs and uh, cars like that, if they have actually improved over the years, because a lot of these cars I've been testing multiple times. So let me know guys, if you want me to go through the data also of my long trip testing to see how charge times on that trip have dropped from the first year to this year, I think we're going to see a substantial drop there because if you saw my A6 uh, Sportback e-tron Quattro video. That was actually the very first car to be able to complete the long trip test without charging. And I think the cars back in 2021 charged for like 30 to 40 minutes on average. So I think the big difference may not be right out efficiency because we're getting a lot of range based on bigger battery packs and a little bit better efficiency. But I think the charge times are the biggest you know improvements in electric cars preconditioning and stuff like that so let me know if you want to see a video based on that data i've tested 108 cars uh on that 600 plus kilometer trip in my long trip test so just that trip alone i've actually driven more than my range test even though i've almost tested twice as many cars here which is insane so guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always please subscribe see you guys later and goodbye